Welcome back to the My Tesla channel. My name is Jeremiah, and in this video, we're gonna be going over five essential tips slash things to know for new Tesla Model 3 slash Y owners. Everything we're gonna be discussing in this video are essentially answers to questions that I had and that I see a lot of other people have when first purchasing a Tesla. So let's get into it. Also, thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. So let's start with the very first thing you're going to notice when driving your new Tesla, one pedal driving and regenerative braking. Some people might even be intimidated by the fact that you rarely have to use your brake pedal, but I promise you, once you get it down, it's really hard to go back to a vehicle where you have to use your brakes for stopping. Whenever you let off your accelerator, the car will automatically begin slowing down without you having to hit the brakes. The energy that would normally be wasted via heat through your brake pads is now being captured and put back into the battery. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's the easy easy to understand explanation of it. Now, when you first start driving and getting used to the strength of regen at different speeds, you might think that the ultimate goal is to be able to fully release the accelerator at a certain point to be able to stop exactly at a certain point, but that's not really how it works. I personally recommend letting off the accelerator about half to three fourths of the way at first when you're coming up to a stop to get some big regen. Then while the car is still regening, begin feathering the accelerator up to the point where you actually want to stop. Does it feel nice when you're coming up to a stop and you're able to perfectly judge when to fully release the accelerator? Yes, but even a season one pedal driver won't be able to achieve that every time. Now, I also wanna mention the creep, roll, and hold setting. A lot of people think that changing these settings will either completely eliminate regen or reduce regen, but that's not the case. Changing these settings will not affect your regen, strength, or anything like that until you're down to about five miles per hour. At that point, whatever setting that you have selected will act accordingly. My best explanation of these settings is creep is like an automatic transmission gas car, roll is like a stick shift and then hold is of course kind of the electric vehicle way i would however highly recommend you go with the hold mode as this will allow the car to regen all the way down to zero miles per hour and then it will hold the car so you don't have to keep your foot on the brake when you're stopped and it will keep itself held until you press the accelerator to go. Hold mode is how you get that true one pedal driving experience. Next up, we have charging at home. I had a lot of questions about this and I see a lot of new owners having questions about this. The number one question I see asked is, what should I charge to daily? If you're a new owner, then more than likely you've heard of battery degradation and you're kind of scared of it. You're, I wouldn't say hyper aware, but you're overthinking it. I'm here to tell you that as long as you don't charge to 100%, assuming you don't have an LFP battery vehicle daily and then let it sit, then your daily limit doesn't really matter. Charge to whatever your daily commute needs are. Now I mentioned LFP and the only Teslas that are currently being made with an LFP battery are base rear wheel drive Model 3, so the cheapest Model 3 trim. If you have that, then yes, you do want to charge to 100% daily. But if you have a long range three slash Y or a performance three slash Y, then just don't charge to hundred percent unless you absolutely need it for a road trip or something. And if, and when that time does come, just make sure that you're on the road driving within five minutes of your vehicle reaching 100%. That's kind of my rule of thumb. If you're going to charge to hundred percent, it's completely fine. Just make sure that you're driving it within five minutes of it hitting 100%. Now, everything I've just said is normally what you'll hear other people say, so I will get a little bit more technical for the people that want me to. I recommend most new owners to charge to 80 to 90% for the first few days or even a week, so you get a feel for how much battery you're consuming for your daily commute. From there, lower it until your end of day battery percentage is sitting around 20 to 30%. The closer you can get your daily charge limit to 50%, the better, as that's what lithium ion likes, especially when it's just sitting and not being driven. I'll have a graph on screen now that shows different stress levels at different percentages based on temperature. The flat line is where you want your car as much as possible, like I said, especially when it's not being driven. Now, with all that being said, remember that the difference in degradation between charging daily to 50% and 80% over something like 10 years is very, very minimal. So yeah, don't really overthink it. Just find what you need personally and stick with it. Last thing, I see a lot of people asking if they should unplug when their car is finished charging. 
no just leave it plugged in tesla even recommends you leaving it plugged in because it keeps your 12 volt battery happy now at number three we have supercharging kind of the opposite of home charging i first want to go ahead and say congrats on your choice of a tesla because well you have access to the supercharger network it's plug and play and the reliability of the supercharger network is second to none you pull up to a stall get the charger handle down open the charge port either by pressing it manually or by pushing the button on the handle and then plug in there's no screens or pulling out a credit card the car will just start charging now if it's your very first time to a supercharger or you're like renting a tesla or something you may be wondering how you're paying for it and well go ahead and head on into your tesla app go to your account and under charging you will see payment methods whatever card you have here is what will be charged when your charging session is complete now there's a few more things that you need to know about supercharging first it's not cheap and thus shouldn't be used as your primary way of charging if you bought the car to save money on gas i own a 2022 model 3 performance which has a 82 ish kilowatt hour battery pack and my local supercharger priced at 31 cents per kilowatt hour that's around 25 dollars to go from zero to 100 whereas at home where i pay six cents per kilowatt hour that's five dollars actually it's less than five dollars to go from zero to 100. i see so many people that don't have home charging buy a tesla thinking that they're gonna save money versus gas only to realize that supercharging is almost as expensive as gas i mean it's almost like any way you try to play it one thing's for certain your bank account is getting crushed by out of control energy prices all driven by 40 year high inflation no wonder 2023 is shaping up to be what financial experts are calling the lost year of wealth take this stunning survey for example it revealed that more than half of americans who make six figures are now living paycheck to paycheck i mean that is really pretty mind-blowing even college educated young people with high paying jobs are struggling to do basic things like pay for their rent and car payments combine that with the tens of thousands of people laid off in just the last few months and it's clear that a financial storm is brewing and nobody is safe but if you think tech titans like elon and hedge fund ceos are letting their money waste away in savings account and in the stock market think again they're pouring hundreds of millions into assets that aren't correlated to the stock market because even if the stock market flatlines this year as they expect these low correlation assets can continue to climb higher and higher but how can we easily invest in low correlation assets i actually spent a lot of time digging into this and according to a recent report by Citibank, the asset with the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class was art that's right contemporary art prices have more than doubled the s p 500's total return over the last 26 years now this market used to be hard to get into but masterworks is the platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank masterworks paid out tens of millions of dollars to their investors last year and that's not a one-off every masterworks exit to date has returned profits to investors like you just take a look at this performance the results speak for themselves now with those kind of results masterworks has seen over 650,000 investors try to gain access so there is a wait list but I reached out to them to give you all VIP access to their latest offerings. To skip the waitlist, just check the description below. Supercharging should only be used if you're not going to make it to your destination slash next charging stop. Now, most of you probably know this, but remember that your car charges the fastest, the lower you are on battery. If your in-car navigation tells you that you can continue your trip, don't sit around letting it charge up another 10 to 20%. Your Tesla is strategically trying to get you to each charging stop with around 10 to 20% battery. I've said this before and I'll continue saying it. It's always faster road tripping wise to make more charging stops charging at the lower end of your battery than less charging stops charging at the top end of your battery. Going from 80 to 100% literally takes longer than going from zero to 80 percent or they take around the same amount of time but it's not like that 20 percent from 80 to 100 is more range than zero to 80. speaking of fast charging how do you know what the speeds these superchargers are and well it's quite simple just click on the supercharger icon in your car's nav the two most common are 150 kilowatt and 250 kilowatt 150 is nicknamed v2 250 is nicknamed v3 now you can't really control what your car routes you to as what's there is what's there but the only thing you should know is that if you're at a 150 make sure you leave space 150 chargers share power in pairs so 1a 1b that's a pair 2a 2b that's a pair 3a 3b that's a pair so on 
and so forth. So if you pull up to 150 and there's someone at 1A, someone at 3A, someone at 4A, don't pull into 1B because then you and the other occupant will be hard split down the middle at 72.5 kilowatts. You should instead go to one of the two, so either 2A or 2B. For my gentlemen out there, think of it like urinals. You always leave a space. Only when there is no spaces is it appropriate to go next to someone. So now that you're equipped to tackle supercharging, let's hop into number four, autopilot what it can do and all of its variants. There are four different variants of Tesla's autonomous driving. That's kind of just the umbrella term I'm gonna be using. And all four variants are considered a level two autonomy, meaning that it's nowhere near like fully autonomous. And Tesla's systems do always require, doesn't matter which one you have, to have your hand on the wheel and full attention. You are responsible for your vehicle. First is autopilot. This comes free standard with every Tesla purchase to day. It's essentially a souped up cruise control. It is activated along with all the other variants that we're going to be discussing by quickly pulling down on the gear selector stock twice. It can be deactivated by pushing up on the gear selector stock once, pushing the brake or applying enough force to kind of break the wheel. Once you've used autopilot, you'll know that kind of resistance that I'm talking about. But with autopilot activated, the car will stay centered in its lane, going whatever speed you have it set to, keeping a distance of whatever you have it set to from the car in front of you, and accelerate slash decelerate based on your surroundings. Next is enhanced autopilot, which here in the States is a $6,000 paid upgrade. This will do everything normal autopilot can do with some extras. First is navigate on autopilot, which enables the car to overtake slower moving cars on the interstate, as well as automatically take exits or merge onto different interstates. Though depending on your settings, it might require manual like confirmation when to overtake and all that good stuff. Next, automatic lane changes, which is what it sounds like. The car will make lane changes for you when you put the blinker on or when you're navigating on autopilot, you can either have it suggest to change lanes and you have to confirm or you can just have it automatically change lanes. It can do all of that. And then auto park, summon and smart summon. I'm not really gonna be discussing these. In fact, if you have a new 2023, your car can't even do this yet because you don't have ultrasonic sensors tesla says that it's these features are going to be restored in an upcoming software update it's been months now no word from them so yeah but they're what they sound like third is full self-driving which is enhanced autopilot with even more features and by more features i mean one but technically two this is a fifteen thousand dollar paid upgrade or a two hundred dollar per month subscription this enables the car to do traffic light and stop sign controls so it will automatically stop for traffic lights and then go when it turns green though i do believe you have to give it a confirmation along with stop signs and then fourth is full self-driving beta this is the other feature that i mentioned that was included in the fifteen thousand dollars slash two hundred dollar per month subscription paid upgrade uh, for full self-driving. The reason that full self-driving beta is different than full self-driving, enhanced autopilot or autopilot and not just kind of add-on features is because it, it truly is different than all the past variants. And you actually need to opt into it once you have full self-driving or the full self-driving paid upgrade. You used to have to opt into it and then go through like a safety score, but I believe in the US now you can just buy full self-driving opt into it and within five minutes your car should get a completely different like version to download which will enable full self-driving beta full self-driving beta can theoretically take you from one destination to another all on its own it'll make right and left hand turns do unprotected turns roundabouts and just everything autopilot enhanced autopilot and full self-driving only really follow lines in a lane that's about all they do Full self-driving beta can do it all. So yeah, don't think that your new Tesla, which only has standard autopilot, will take a right-hand turn or stop at a traffic light. It will blow right through them. It just, it, it really only goes straight. Like those three variants, they really only go straight. And then number five, the phone app. This is one of the coolest parts about owning a Tesla because the phone app can do a bunch of different things. First and foremost, it acts as your key. So with your phone in your hand or your pocket, you can just walk up to the car and it will auto unlock and you can walk away and it will auto lock. Now I, along with Tesla, actually recommends that you keep the key card with you just in case something happens to your phone. Now the app can also pretty much fully control the car. It can unlock, lock, open the frunk, 
open the trunk, close the trunk. It can't close the front because the front's not fully automated. It's manual. Uh, you can open the charge port. You can flash, honk, vent the windows, start it for someone else to quickly hop in without needing a key, check recent known tire pressure, fully control HVAC system, just literally everything. Also, you have four quick controls for things that you use the most, but there is a way to have five. I've discussed this before in past videos, and still to this day, I get comments on those videos from people thinking that it's been patched or it's been fixed or it doesn't work anymore, but it does. Go into editing mode and drag your fifth desired quick control to the far right. When you see the highlighted area move from highlighting the fourth most right quick control and is now one over and is being cut off by the edge of your screen, release. Another really useful bit of information to know about the app is scheduled departure and charging. For charging, just set a time you'd like the car to start charging every day and it will. Scheduled departure with the precondition option turned on will make sure the car is ready at whatever time you have it set. Really nice if you leave at a certain time every day and you want the cabin at a certain temp and the battery preheated for optimal efficiency. Now another good tip to know is that if you don't leave at a certain time every day and you still want the battery to preheat to have the best efficiency possible, just turn on your HVAC system 10 to 15 minutes before you leave. This does the same thing as turning on that precondition battery and climate inside of the scheduled departure. Just turn your HVAC system on. Now the app features don't stop there as you can view a live feed of your car via century mode, including the new interior cabin camera streaming century mode that you can view. You can add drivers, see charging stats and how much you're saving versus gas buy software upgrades and even schedule service and get roadside assistance. So I've heard roadside assistance can be, uh, it can vary based on what state you're in. It can do a whole lot and I really recommend you get yourself familiar with it. But those are five in reality a lot more. Essential tips slash things to know for new Model 3 slash Y owners. If you have any other essential things to know for new owners, right? Like what they should know within that first week of ownership or maybe even before they pick up the car that you feel I missed, then drop a comment down below. Now, if you are new around here and you wanna see more Tesla related content like this video, then feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed this video as it will help push this video to other new Tesla Model 3 slash Y owners that could use these tips. Thank you all so much for all of the support recently and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.